Right, so, um... <sighs> the phone I was recording on died. Like, it won't turn on. Like, I charge it and the battery's like, no. Nope. Nope, I'm not gonna turn on. I should have flipped the screen so I don't keep looking at myself. Whatever, I'm too lazy to fix it now. So I'm sorry that I'm not, I'm gonna be looking at myself and not at the camera because um, I'm great and easily distractible. Anyway, this is my iPad that my mom gave me. So my mom's old iPad. Um, right, let's see how this works. The screen ratio doesn't look the same, but I think the video is gonna be the same. I hope it doesn't like cut off. I hope it just like lengthens. Right, so like this whole thing is experimental. <laughs> Also, I have a zit right here, so if you see something shiny, that's my, that's my zit sticker. Okay, let's just kind of go for it and try to jump back in and remember what happened, even though it's been a little while. <clears throat> Not very organized. Also, I just like didn't know how to set up the iPad. Right now it's on top of my lap desk in its own case. So that's the only way it's able to stand upright. <clears throat> oh, right! Right, right, right. There was like a weird picture that Nona drew that the angel was like, what the fuck is this? <clears throat> Ow. I slept really weird and my neck is killing me. Oof. Chapter 18. It's got the uh, eighth house skull with the bandages over the eyes. When they got back up to the classroom, Camilla had emerged from her corner. <laughs> emerged from her corner? Or is it Palamides? <clears throat> and made herself useful unplugging all the electrical equipment and stacking chairs. The angel was writing something on the board. I'm doing inventory, she said to Nona's question. If we get looted, I don't want them ruining all the kids' things trying to find stuff. Hot sauce, can you, do it? can you go down the hallway and turn off the generator? I know you know how, but don't forget to bleed it afterward. Okay, I'm sure that's something normal, but in a book about necromancy, my brain's like, yeah, and then you gotta stab the generator because it's got blood in it. Okay, no, no. <laughs> We're not on necromancy planet. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry if I touch the thing with my feet. <sighs> Nona went to go with hot sauce as she had a lively interest in what bleeding the generator would involve. <laughs> Me too. But the angel said, Nona, stay a moment. I want to know what bleeding the generator means. <laughs> <clears throat> Nona really is the audience insert. Like, I know she isn't, but like, you know, she kind of is. Because we have no idea what the fuck is going on. <laughs> She. <laughs> well, she knows a little bit more than we know. <clears throat> she had a piece of paper in her hand. When Hot Sauce had closed the door, threw her to the classroom. Nona and Camilla both approached her. Camilla did something a little strange then. She tripped. She pitched forward on raised bit of carpet and stumbled into the angel. Tried to right herself with her hands on the angel's hips and front. And stumbled upward saying, sorry. Sorry, glancing out the window like she was embarrassed. Then she turned her head back and looked more normally, Camilla, standing as gracefully as though she could never even think about tripping. What did you just do, Camilla? Did you just rob the angel? <clears throat> angel said, it's really been that kind of day, hasn't it? <laughs> yes, said Camilla. The angel was fidgeting with the piece of paper. She said, may I ask Nona a question? She doesn't have to answer, said Camilla. Of course not, said the angel. Nona, who thought she could speak for herself, said, I'll try, but if you want to test me about the map, I don't think I'll be much good. I want to take it home and look at it there. The angel showed her the piece of paper. It was her drawing again. Maybe the angel really liked it. Sweet girl. Nona was ready to be magnanimous if the angel wanted to keep it. <laughs> she guessed she could draw it again at home if she wanted, and she hadn't even tried very hard. She, haven't even, she hadn't even really tried very hard.
<clears throat> the angel said, how did you draw this? This question bewildered Nona so much that at first she didn't know what to say. The angel slid a sheet of paper in front of her. She'd recognized the scribbles she was doing with most of her mind elsewhere, right before she and Hot Sauce had escaped to go to the broadcast. And she said, puzzled to death <laughs> with my hand? Stinky man, I'm sorry I'm not letting you into the room. I'm sorry. I know. I'm very mean. Or it might be because I haven't fed them yet. I haven't fed myself yet. Usually I feed them when I have breakfast. <clears throat> the angel urged tensely, did you get this from a picture? Nona looked down at the animal she had drawn and thought perhaps she understood. She said, no, I made it up. It does work. I promise. See these things? They're its ears, she said in much the same tones that she would explain to Kevin. This thing is its nose, and you can't see it because I didn't draw it, but the mouth is under here. When it first it was born, it used to live in a river, but then it got so cold it had to get large. I know the legs can't rotate, but you don't think that's stupid, do you? What the fuck are you talking about, Nona? Is this some weird evolution bullshit? <laughs> <clears throat> She looked up at Camilla and the angel and then said, am I in trouble? I'm putting a yellow tab there for what the fuck is going on. <laughs> the angel looked at Camilla, not Nona. I've seen pictures of this animal before, said the angel slowly and carefully. I only saw it because I did a special unit when I went to university. I went to the special zoology school on Miro and attended a heap of underground archaeology talks. I was a youthful firebrand, political, you know, and that's where I saw the picture. Okay, said Nona. Camilla said, looking at the picture, I don't think I've seen this before. You wouldn't have, said the angel. It's a cradle creature. From before the apocalypse? I've heard that phrase, said Camilla, somewhere. Have you? said the angel. Nona didn't know what to say. The angel and Camilla didn't seem to know what to say either. And they all stood around for a moment, with Nona racking her brains. Camilla took her gla dark glasses off and folded them up neatly to put in her breast pocket. Then she said quietly, may I ask a question? Camilla's back, maybe? <laughs> Nona glanced up at Camilla's face just to confirm it. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, Camilla's back. <laughs> Go ahead, said the angel, smiling without her eyes having anything to say about it. Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, other way around, that was Camilla. <laughs> Back in Lemuria or anywhere else, said Palamides, did you ever have an operation or receive medical care from the Nine Houses? Even if you don't remember it, did you ever get some kind of implant? You said you met archaeologists, were they house? Did you specifically meet any necromancers who gave you any kind of treatment? Nona was so shocked she forgot to breathe. <laughs> Palamides had not simply broken one rule, he had broken about fifty! The expression on the angel's face brought her back to real life. It was so terrible it hurt Nona to look. The crinkles on the sides of her mouth and eyes froze. She suddenly seemed older and more shrunken, rather than tiny and buoyant, tiny and withered. Palamides moved to say gently, I don't mean you any harm. But a weird high-pitched whirring had started at the vicinity of his ankles. <laughs> Noodle had gotten up from the basket, and the hair right at his flanks was standing up as though it had been electrocuted, and he was growling. Nona had never heard gr Groodle Nowl. That's not what it says. Nona had never heard Noodle growl before. He broke into a volley of barks, with his lips pulling back from his sharp yellow teeth. This roused the angel. She said, bloody dog, let me put him in the kitchen with a toy. And she dragged Noodle to the kitchen by his collar. She picked up her big black bag and she closed the door behind her and then a few seconds later she emerged, still looking gray and haggard but more resolute and settled somehow. Can the dog sense necromancy? Necromancers? That would be interesting. I mean, he's already like a weirdly evolved dog. I should have brought something. My arms are getting cold. <laughs> I forget the bedrooms in the house get cold. <clears throat> She was ashy underneath the freckles and her mouth was set in a tight, cool line, but she had drawn herself up to her not very impressive height and stood in front of Palamides as though she weren't scared. Nona could still see terror on her lips and in the hands, and in her hands and in her feet. At this point, the lights finally sizzled to a close. Hot sauce was done with the generator, Nona thought. 
The room plunged into hot black darkness. The angel went round to the windows and pulled open the blackout curtains and the blinds recklessly so that electric blue light puddled on the floor. And then she circled back to the teacher's desk and threw herself into the seat. She said, Nona, do you want to go and sit with Noodle? He was making little whimpering noises even through the door. He comes down with you. <laughs> Nona hesitated, but she had been kept out of one too many conversations by being sent away to do something ostensibly good. <laughs> Nona could tell the angel's plan from the quick movements of the angel's eyes, uh, eyeballs, the swallowing. She said apologetically, Normally, I would say yes, but I think I'd like to stay, please. Nona, I love you. Are you sure you can listen from the door, you know? Said the angel baldly. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> the angel passed her fingers over her face, briefly touching her eyelids with thumb and forefinger, one on each. She relaxed back backwards into the chair. Palamides didn't sit, but Nona sat herself down in one of the big puddles of blue light enjoying the sensation of it, and absolutely nothing else that was going on. <laughs> oh, honey. I like that. Uh, green? Mm, yeah. It's not a usual pretty description, but it kind of is. Oh my gosh, it's itching. Why? Why? Mm. Did you know my colleague thought you were a prosy? said the angel, wiping her hands together. I never thought it fit. What I know about sex work could fit in a teaspoon and leave a lot left over, said Paul <laughs> Did you know the children call you the angel? Now the angel's mouth quirked on the other side. Her composure had come back in part, and her teacher voice came to the fore, so that she might have been describing why socks would, in fact, isolate that ice cube. Yes, they've come up with a very strange take on my... My nickname. It's that hot sauce's fault, I'm afraid. She overheard a couple of things she doesn't understand. I didn't know anything about it until last night when she explained. The kids usually call me Miss or Mr. or Sir. Usually Sir, so Jolie can be Miss. And of course, the kids just call Nona, Nona. Palamides said, what is the implant? Please, we only have much time. We only have so much time. Angel hesitated. Look, she said, and moistened her lips with her tongue. Will Nona listen to you if he sent her to the kitchen? <laughs> I don't know why my brain said to the fridge. Not the fridge. We're not sending Nona to the fridge. That would be very weird. I could ask her to if that's important to you, he said. But she's an adult who can make her own decisions. It doesn't matter. I've made up my mind. I want to stay, said Nona. Hearing that, the angel stopped looking at Nona altogether and held Palamides' gaze instead. Her own rigid like she had put on blinders and narrowed, narrowed existence to him. Why aren't you affected by the blue madness? Which one are you, and how many of you are still alive? I thought it was sheer optimism, the report that most of you were down. Palam Palamides stepped Camilla's body forward, and the angel said swiftly, Don't move, please. If you take one step closer, I'm leaving, out the window if I have to. You can get what you can from my dead body, but if you're this good, you might have an inkling that my dead body is designed to deny you answers. Palamides put his hands up. I'm staying right here. I want no harm to come to you. I won't compel you. I have no thought of hurting you. I am not your enemy. You were born my enemy, said the angel very sadly and very tiredly now. Or worse, you became my enemy in the last five minutes by doing the things, the thing you can't walk back from. Palamides said slowly, What do you think I am? You can be nobody but a lictor, said the angel. You used necromancy on me when you touched me. For that split, split second when I thought you'd fallen, it couldn't be anything else. I don't know what you sense today. I've met you dozens of times have you never cared before. So I don't know what's changed or how I messed up, but God, what a mess. Nona would have laughed aloud at the idea that Palamides was a lictor. Only she was too scared to laugh. She did not know what to say or what to do. She sat in her pocket of blue light and wished hard that Camilla had just taken her home, that they were a million miles away, that today had never happened. She had the terrible sinking feeling that whatever was going wrong right now, it was her fault somehow that she hadn't been smart enough or good enough. Palamides was saying, I'm not a lictor if it helps. Swear to me, said the angel, suddenly intent. Swear on your bloody life. I swear on the life of Camilla Hecht that I am not a lictor, said Palamides. The angel searched his face. Whatever the angel wanted to find there, Nona was searching her face. Uh, Nona was watching her face as hard as she could. So hard her eyes were watering. She eventually found it. She slumped back in the chair with her chin sagging to her chest, and she glanced at Palamides, drawn and gaunt and complete. Then that'll make this easier, she said. I don't like that! I knew that things were going to start happening, but...
but I don't like it. You're not allowed to hurt any of the people I love, okay? I know you've already hurt them, but stop hurting them more. Wait, did I accidentally put a green? Or oh, the green and the yellow tabs look very similar. The door next to the corridor opened. The angel flinched so hard it looked as though she might be having a fit. Nona turned her head and saw Hot Sauce. Hot Sauce looked at the open curtains. She looked at Nona. Then a huge rippling sound entered Nona's head. She was aware of a tight, hard noise, pop, pop, distant, and then much, much closer, as though her whole head was exploding. Everything went black, that she wasn't asleep. She had the biggest and most frantic headache, and she was terrified. Her body wasn't working. She could feel nothing and perceive nothing. The headache got worse and worse and worse. Then suddenly it stopped, and she didn't know anything at all. I think this is what needs a yellow tab. Oh, no, no, no. That still does need a yellow tab. Like, how would Nona know about cre weird, weird creatures from before? Possibly before the apocalypse. I'm assuming that's what it means by cr cradle creatures. <laughs> or maybe dinosaurs. Time exited her body. After a period apart from it, the headache came back. It wasn't as bad, and then it got a lot better. The blackness didn't go away, but her other senses started to come online. There was something rough under her face that smelled like wax crayon and lemon cleaner, and she was drooling. Her mouth was full, full of something disgusting and sticky. Her mouth opened, and it all fell out. She was lying down. Nona, so well-versed in thinking about what her body was doing in various states of consciousness, could tell that. An unfamiliar voice was saying, Cancel that. I said cancel that order. Merv, do you hear me? Merv, if I even see one of you bastards step into this building, I will call such hell down on you that they'll put your names on the extinction roll. Don't you hang up on me, you motherfucking king-making piece of shit. I'll rip off Hope's head and shit down his neck. God damn it. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> what? Um, is that the driver? Then the angel. What did they say? They said, sure, no props, said the unfamiliar voice. What do you think they fucking said, aim? Oh boy, we're fucked. Oh God, we're fucking fucked. Hey, that's me. <laughs> the angel said, go unlock the door. We'll take the girl and get out of here. No, we leave her here. She'll get liquidated. You should have thought of that before you started playing teacher with the friggin' Troya experiment. The angel burst out frantically. I didn't know. How the living hell was I meant to know? You've kept me away from all that. I've been completely separated from any intel. You knew Merv went mental on us yesterday. Said it was a power play. Snapped the unfamiliar unfamiliar voice. Okay, um, where's uh, Camilla and Palamides? Where'd they go? Where are they? Tell me where they are. <clears throat> I don't mean that. How the hell could I have known about these two? I only realized they lived in the safe house last night. Yeah, well, Tessifon is short on cash. We don't have anywhere to stash anyone, said the voice. If you just let me within two meters of this place, I could have told you months ago. I was protecting my Edenite kids on the roll. They wouldn't have gotten transferred to the other side of the city. Oh, they would have gotten transferred to the other side of the city, and they needed this. Pull yourself together, Aim. You don't get to think about what some snot-nosed kids need, bawled the voice. What are we going to do? What the hell are we going to do? Yelling at each other won't help. Said the angel tightly, you are the least respectful bodyguard I have ever had. Okay, cool, nice, great, cool. So the unfamiliar voice, <laughs> I love this person. I don't know who they are, but I love them. <clears throat> Orange chat for funny. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Oh my God, this is such a fuck up. Not on a personal level, because as far as I'm concerned, good job. But this is such a fuck up. We go to the roof, like you said, the angel suggested, but the unfamiliar voice said, change my mind, that's not an exit. They won't shoot at us if you're with me. We can't account for anyone else. Then what? God, I'm too old for this. There was a big clanging sound. It hurt Nona's ears. An awful pressure traveled through her head that felt like she wanted to hold her nose and blow something out her ears, like when she was swimming. It sounded as though someone was dragging furniture. Um, I don't think that's what was going on. Anyone comes at me, I take them down, said the voice. The angel sounded torn between amusement and annoyance. You discharge a firearm with me in the room, you'll get court-martialed and hanged. What? <laughs> Who is the angel? Everyone's too busy for bureaucracy, said the voice. We play our cards right here. I can get suffer out clean. Hell, I play this really right. Nobody's going to know a thing until it's too late. 
I don't know anything until it's too late. Me! <laughs> um, you know, I should try to remember that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that down to be the caption of this video. Wait, I put my iPad on Do Not Disturb and my phone also went on Do Not Disturb. That's weird, I don't need that. I need to figure out how to undo that. That is so annoying. Okay. Let's write it down in a text to myself. <clears throat> All right. Dictate, because I'm too lazy for typing. Hell, I prelate this really right. Nobody's going to know a thing until it's too late. No. Dash. I play this really right. Nope. I'm not trying to highlight right. I'm trying to put a comma. Nobody's going to know a thing until it's too late. Tamsin. Okay, there we go. We're good now. <clears throat> oh God, you can't believe that. You're going to get yourself shot. Not with my pedigree. <clears throat> How many of them are there? Nine, maybe 10, plus driver, probably 11. That's a massacre. It's a compliment, said the voice modestly. Anyway, there's, there's <laughs> anyway, they're still defusing the door. The pressure got lots and lots worse. It got better. Something went clink in, very close, in her very close vicinity. Her sight softly shaded back in. It was dark. The room was hot and close and stuffy again. Nona stared at a huge sopping, huge sopping red patch of blood on the floor. Was that what was in her mouth? Or, um... Her head felt wet and itchy. The unfamiliar voice was saying, Hang on a mo, I'm just going to deadhead these two. What does that mean? How about you... How, how about you don't touch anyone? Because I'm gonna cut your hands off. The angel said tightly, Don't you dare touch them. It's for your safety, ma'am. Don't watch. It's goddamn superstition. Big booted footsteps clomped over to Nona. Sorry, I accidentally skipped and started reading the next line of dialogue. This is what happens when a book gets intense. <sighs> yeah, well, Auntie told me it was 90% super superstition and 10% for the fun of it. Okay, I don't like you as much anymore. Big booted footsteps clomped over to Nona. This was too much, even if Cam had always told her to play dead until she couldn't. Nona sat upright, bolt upright in terror. Someone swore and there was another big pop and she was thrown forward by, by a huge brief light in her chest like pain, much quicker than the headache, spreading through her rib cage briefly and wetly before it went away. She shrieked from the floor. You shot me again! That's twice! <laughs> Poor Nona. <laughs> Then there was the angel saying, no, no, stop, she's alive, stop, that's an order, that's a direct order, Nona, Nona. And there was the angel rolling her over, her face wet with tears, saying, I'm sorry, God, Nona, I'm so sorry. But Nona was not in the mood. Um, um, I kind of want her to... My brain went like, what if she sees Camilla hurt and then like all her powers come back? Okay, that's not what's gonna happen, but the drama of it, just imagine. Okay, she struggled free from the angel's grasp and looked for Camilla. Camilla was lying very still on the floor, face up, eyes half closed and staring sightlessly at the ceiling. Her front was all over blood and her hands were clutched into stiff claws over her chest, as though she had clapped them there in a panic. The amount of blood was astonishing. Nona didn't think people could even bleed that much. It was more gross than frightening. Nona crawled over to, the angel, to her as the angel was saying, hold fire, hold your damn fire and Nona peeled up Camilla's eyelids. Even in the dark, Nona could see they were bright, clear gray. Camilla said calmly, it's fine, Nona, you're fine, back up. And then Camilla opened her hands, and two bullets were there, shining in her fingers. Then she said, update? Camilla, I love you! Nona looked up. There was the angel sitting on the floor, looking as though she had seen two ghosts, which she kind of had. Near her was the new person, a compact, medium-sized person with a machete strapped to each thigh, and a small, heavy gun in their hands, not wearing an air mask, not wearing a hat. The mask hung around their neck as though they'd been in a hurry and hadn't pulled it up yet. Their face would have been fierce and handsome if it hadn't been puckered with shrapnel scars on both cheeks, across the nose that should have been flattish but had been broken once, 
in a peppery storm of burns at one temple. The scars meant they weren't fierce and handsome. They were super cool and fierce and handsome. <laughs> Nona, I love you. Nona, please, I love you so much. There's a little bit of, oh, I'll put a pink tab there because that's a little bit of Gideon in there. Their hair had been buzzed short on one side and kept longer on the other. The long part dyed a shriekingly electric blue. I like that. And their brows were dark and their eyes were darker, smudged with camouflage makeup above and beneath. And Nona had known who they were the moment their body moved, but the machetes helped it. It was Our Lady of the Passion for the first time unmasked. Shot us, she wailed, and my teacher! Palamides was talking to the angel, and someone shot us through the window, and now the carpet's gross! This is the worst day of school ever! <laughs> Camilla sat up, and she and Pash stared at each other. Pash's hands and features screwed into an expression of stupefied loathing. <laughs> Camilla's betrayed nothing at all. Did you shoot us? asked Camilla, whose left hand was tightened, had tightened immediately. No, that was fucking Merv Wing said Pash, looking as though she was sorry about it. How the hell do you know who I am? Crown's been squealing, right? No, said Camilla, who had relaxed her left hand minutely. Why weren't we told she was one of us? That's they to you, Pash said, and you're not one of us either, zombie. Pash, uh, sorry, the Pash. The angel said urgently, Pash, I retract liquidation order. We can deal with this later. The circumstances have changed. Is there any way you can call Merv off? No, they were ready to go for you the other day when the, they thought Suffer was putting more of her own people in. What's happening? Which was you, wasn't it? Pash turned to Nona, who was wringing clots of blood out of a completely messed up braid. You made the radio call to Crown two days ago. You were the one Crown was with. What the fuck's going on, you little creep? I knew that was going to be significant. Oh my god. No one was deeply injured. I didn't make a radio call. It was a pretend radio call. And don't call me a creep because I'm not. No, no, I love you. The angel said helplessly, that was the crown you're always going on about? No, no, what are you? What is she? And Pash barked, I told you, you're looking at the fucking Lichter Project, Aim. Your dog was getting walked by the fucking Lichter Project. And you just called white protocol on the fucking Lichter Project. The angel said, give me the radio. Pash unbuckled a real wireless radio from her belt and tossed it to the angel, who caught it neatly, even though her hands were still shaking. She tapped something into it and held it up to her ear and said, This is the messenger. Holding pattern downstairs, please. Then, yes, we know. And, yes, we know. These are unusual circumstances. Then, yes, but if you're so hot on protocol, why aren't you letting our designated lifeguard extract us from the building? Then, that's ridiculous. At the second, yes, we know, Camilla scrambled to her feet. She seized a stack of chairs and shook them out in front of the doorway that led to the cloakroom, led through to the cloakroom. Pash immediately raised and trained a gun at her, which made Nona gasp in indignation, but Camilla didn't stop. The angel was saying, get me the commander on the line. And then, you do realize one gunshot in here and you're in front of a tribunal that hopes in front of a tribunal? We don't, yes, we know we can't countermand. Look, don't you dare. We've got my dog in here. No, we will not put on a gas mask. This is a coup. Fine. If you come up those stairs, the lifeguard will shoot you. Messenger out. <laughs> what? The angel lowered the radio. She said dolefully, fuck. <laughs> Pash went to the teacher's desk and threw it over. Everything on top. The paper clips, the pencil sharpener, and the whiteboard erasers and collection of paper animals scattered to the floor in an almighty whomp. Then she vaulted behind it, the angel moved to her, and Pash drew her gun from the back off her strap. From the strap off her back. Camilla looked at her and said, how many? Nine, ten, no gunfire, but maybe electrics, said Pash, purely on automatic, and then she blustered, don't fucking talk to me, Hecht. The moment the commander hears about this, your ass is grass, and there will be no crown to save you. Do you want my help to get out of here, said Camilla, or not? I would say yes, because Camilla is the best. I don't bloody need your help, said Pash, at the same moment that the angel said, Yes, we can't let Mervwing take us, not now. I did. I did call for you to be shot, though. No problem, said Camilla levelly, so long as I can let out some deferred aggression. Ma'am, marry me, please. <sighs> You're a minion, and you've been bloody lying to we suffer this whole time about what you can do, said Pash, hotly. The commander never said shit about you coming back from a bullet. You are the lich. I would put another one in your brain right now for science, only now I don't want to waste my ammo. Guess we've all lied to each other, said Camilla. 
Pash looked to the angel and said pleadingly, Aim, for fuck's sake, what if she turns around and snaps your neck? No, no, please go into the kitchen now, said the angel, for your safety not to get you out of the way. I don't want to leave Camilla, said Nona. A window broke somewhere on the door, on the door. No, no, on the floor below. Camilla was already drawing Nona behind the desk. They all crouched down in the dark behind the desk with its nice particle board smell. It was so quiet that for a moment Nona thought Cam had been wrong. There couldn't be 10 or 11 people coming for them. The whole building was far too quiet. Noodle, Noodle started to softly... Mm, I need to slow down. Noodle started to softly scratch behind the staff room kitchen door and then Aim said, Noodle, danger. And he stopped and he clacked away from the door. Ooh. Camilla was saying quickly, isn't there something else she could go? She could take the dog. Looking at the staff room kitchen door made Nona look at the other door. They went to the corridor down the hall, and she remembered all at once and said, Hot sauce. Where's hot sauce? The angel said, Pash locked her in the generator room. They have to get through there, through here to get to her. I want hot sauce, said Nona. Pash had her head crooked out from one side of the desk, watching the shut door. She said tersely, I don't want the lich running around. Camilla said calmly, Make up your mind. And the angel was fe said feebly, No, no, hot sauce wasn't. She saw, you see, she was in the room when... Oh... Yeah, you... Oh, no, no. There was a distant clash. Crash. A glittery soft sound like glass caving in. That's the door, said Camilla. Pash suddenly said, Oh my god, I've changed my mind, okay? The lich goes through the door. No distractions. Get out of here. Camilla asked, Why not get everyone out? Pash said to the angel, Come on, aim. Even the zombie sees reason. Get in the kitchen! But the angel, aim, said, If they don't see me, they won't hesitate to use projectiles. Camilla said, the longer we exchange fire, the worse. Once we break the first wave, push. Hecht, let's get one thing straight. I'm giving the orders, and if you don't say, yes, sir, no, sir, three bags full, sir, I shoot out your kneecaps and use you as a meat shield, said Pash. Three bags full of what? said Camilla. Fucking whoop ass if you don't do what I say, comedian. Okay. I'll keep some melee. No friendly fire. Pash aggressively pulled her mask up over her mouth, a hard-shelled plastic snap with one with a bit for breathing through. Nona couldn't help admiring her. Her dark rimmed grease paint made her eyes a lovely hazily yellow green color. Pash saw Nona looking at her soppily, scowled at her with her whole face, then drew a pair of goggles over those beautiful dark rimmed eyes. Nona vaguely made a note to practice scowling and also to dye her hair. Nona loves dark paint around yellow eyes. Don't scream. Don't scream. Ah, oh, God. Putting another pink one there. There was another less distant smash. Pash tensed up and said, They're taking the stairs. Beside Nona, absurdly, no uh, Camilla relaxed. She was crouched behind the desk doing something with the snaps of her baggy canvas trousers, digging her hands into her capacious pockets. She said, Nona, do you want to go or stay? Nona dithered. Go. No, stay. No, I'll go. She said, Hot sauce needs me, unless... Camilla, please be safe. I love you so much. This won't take long. Go when I say go, said Camilla, and she smiled at Nona. Smiled her lovely, exquisite little smile, the one that made Nona feel like she could really fall in love with Camilla forever and forever and get married to her and maybe adopt a dog. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> and she said to Pash, do you want them alive? Pash expression, Pash's expression hardened further. No. Nona, said Cam, don't come back until we come to get you. Go. Nona fled. She scrabbled for the door next to the staff room door and flung herself through, then shut it behind her. Her footsteps squeak on the lin squeaked on the linoleum and the door creaked horribly because Kevin loved to hang on doors and try to make them make the longest and worst sounds he possibly could. It sounded like a siren in the silence, worse than, and she was grateful when the door closed behind her. Then she flew down the dark, dim corridor, a place of unspeakable and enjoyable terror for her and the gang normally. It was so narrow and the walls were so dark and sweaty. And when she got to the generator room, hammered on, on the door before she remembered she was the one who had to unlock it. The key was still in the lock. She turned it with sweaty fingers and drew back the bolt. She nearly tripped down the short flight of steps, and she said, It's me, hot sauce, it's me, before clanging the door shut again behind her. I don't, I don't, I don't want to keep reading. Okay, there's only like four pages left. <clears throat> I'm fine, I'm fine, everything's fine. The generator room was quiet and dark, except for a little light box window over the internal door and another one through to the outside. 
only there was a taller, build, build, taller building in the way, so it let in a sickly greenish light. When the generator was on, it usually made a lot of violent waffling noises, the kind that threw the tinies into disorder because Honesty had told them it was powered by kids their age burning to death inside. <laughs> it wasn't like they believed him, but they hated the story. I wonder why. <clears throat> I skipped forward ahead. Sorry. It wasn't. Uh, hot sauce was lying curled up in front of the generator. She'd been sick, and there was a bright acid smell of vomit. But Nona didn't care. She went to Hot Sauce's side, and she rolled her over. Hot Sauce looked at her, and also didn't look at her. Her eyes were strange. She looked at Nona as Nona got out an old wad of tissue paper from her pocket and wiped Hot Sauce's nose and mouth. It's me, Hot Sauce. It's Nona. Hot Sauce said clearly, "I made it up." Nona didn't know what this meant, so she said, "Yes, it's fine. I'm fine." So that Hot Sauce said more strongly and more wonderingly, I made it up. Yes, only there are people in the building and we have to stay here because they've come to kidnap the angel, said Nona. Hot Sauce said she had a bodyguard. Yes, said Nona. Stupid, said the Hot Sauce. Stupid, didn't watch her enough, didn't read the signs, didn't watch. Nona, I made it up? Nona decided to go along with this. It seemed to be important to Hot Sauce. Yes, you made it up. Hot Sauce's hand was still trembling a little. She didn't seem to she didn't seem like she'd been hurt, but she was shivering. She tugged up her shirt so that Nona could see, along with the soft watery ripples of the burns down her belly, which she had tucked into the waistband of her trousers. It, would, it was a handgun. Nona said alarmed, Hot sauce, don't carry it like that. Pierce says everyone who carries guns in their pants ends up shooting off their balls, and it sounds incredibly rude, but I believe her. <laughs> Where's Pira? I need Pira back. Hot sauce's face wavered and softened. You're sweet, she said. From down the corridor and a little beyond, there was a big crash. Then an astonishing, a, a really astonishing huge noise like zap, the kind of whip crack sound Pira could have could make with a dish towel. That doesn't sound like the kind of noise you can make with a dish towel, but okay. And a very short scream. Hot sauce sat up so quickly it was all Nona could do to wrestle her down again. She struggled against Nona toward the door and Nona had to go full dead weight on her. Pin her to the floor, wrap her arms and legs around her as though she were Hot Sauce's baby who lived in a pouch. <laughs> no, I love you so much. <clears throat> okay, I kept reading again while I was getting the tag because this is what happens to my brain. They both fell to the floor and were a little stunned. But when a huge resonant blam, 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 percussive gunshot rattled down the hall, much bigger and deeper than the normal peppery gunfire sounds, Hot Sauce went quiet and limp. She shuddered in Nona's arms. She said, I made it up, all of it? Yes, all of it, said Nona. And then in a fit of honesty, she said, okay, only what did you make up, Hot Sauce? The bullet went into your head, said Hot Sauce. Nona tried to remember everything honesty had ever told her about lying, lies, porkies, and untruths. You think it did, she said cunningly, but it didn't. It made a hole, said Hot Sauce. Nona, exhausted from the lies, was saved from having to think up more by another blam blam and a long cut off scream, and then a terrific, terrific tinkling glassy smash. A yell seemed to briefly come from nowhere, uh, from outside somewhere, and then there was no yell at all. Nona held Hot Sauce very tightly, and after a while she felt Hot Sauce's arms go around her, and she knew that Hot Sauce was going to be all right. They lay there together in the sweltering, gross smelling dark, listening to the sounds coming down, coming from down the hallway. Ever since she had known what fighting was, Nona had yearned to see Camilla fight. Camilla, mo Camilla mostly wouldn't. I wish you could remember. She fights amazing. She had sparred with Pira a couple times, briefly and violently, always on Pira's critique, with Nona barely able to follow what was going on, sometimes on the beach, in the dark, away from the hot stripe of the lone yellow light still functioning in front of the harbor pier. Now as she listened as hard as she possibly could to noises she could not understand, Nona shivered all over and could not work out what she felt or what she wanted. She kept savagely biting at the inside of her lips so that blood would come out and then it would seal over. She heard noises that sounded as though people were throwing furniture around the classroom. Rude when they were already low on chairs for anyone who wasn't a tiny. Older kids were sitting on all sorts of things. And then one last long sound that wasn't a scream but a huge whimper. Then nothing. Hot Sauce's gun poked into Nona's thigh. After a long time in the silence, she whispered, Is it over? Hot Sauce didn't answer. We should stay here, I guess, said Nona, answering herself. 
It was always nice to be answered, even if it was just you. Hansas was still so still and quiet that Nona thought she must have fallen asleep. When someone rapped lightly at the generator room door, though, she rolled away from Nona with her hand on her waistband, and it wasn't until the angel's voice said, Nona, hot sauce, that she took her hand away. Nona stood as the door opened, and there was the angel. It was too hard to see clearly in the dimness of the room, but she didn't seem any worse for wear, not limping or anything. Noodle followed on her heels, still cringing a little bit, but he headed straight to Nona and hot sauce when she, he saw they were lying down. Noodle loved it when people were lying down. He sniffed Nona around the mouth and licked her until she said, ew, and she had to sit up in a hurry. The angel said very gently, we need to leave now. Nona said, how's Cam? Feeling that this was unfair, she added hastily, and Pash? <laughs> They're fine, cuts and scrapes. Who said Nona? Phew, I never know how to pronounce that. So the W here though. Whew, always needs to have a whew. Is the classroom munted? Well, the windows are going to have to be replaced and the blinds are busted, so the angel evasively. <laughs> I think someone fell on the bean experiment and Noodle did a wee in the staff room, but really it could be worse. The juniors, oops, my foot was on the cord. I don't want to pull the iPad down. <clears throat> the juniors will have to go add got smushed to their bean experiment variables. There's no coming back from that one. <laughs> Nona was sorry for the bean experiment. The angel said, did Pash hurt you when she bundled you in here, hot sauce? She can be a bit... Aggie. But Hot Sauce said tonelessly, I'm fine, and let's go. You don't sound fine. I feel like she must might have realized something about Nona, or whatever. I don't know. Nona was more than happy to follow this edict. She and Hot Sauce held hands all the way down the corridor. She thought Hot Sauce looked at her a little strangely. But after everything they'd been through, and that didn't really strike Nona as odd. As they came to the lighter part of the corridor, as they entered the square of light the doorway opened onto, onto the classroom, Hot Sauce detached her hand from Nona's altogether. The classroom was much more a mess than the angel had let than the angel had let on. Nona barely noticed the wreck of the bean experiment. Pash was nowhere to be found, and Cam was dragging bodies out to the cloakroom. Human bodies, real bodies. And Nona's eyes followed a pair of boots disappearing at Cam's feet in awful fascination. She stared unseeingly until Cam until suddenly Cam was back in the classroom and said sharply, Nona, come here. Nona couldn't for a moment. There were more hoots behind Cam in the cloakroom. Wind scoured a big hole in the window where the edges of the glass were strung with red globs and gobbets and hot and drying wind that made Nona's eyes wrinkle up. She stared in wonderment at what remained of a display on the wall she had held stable together. A big impressive art and writing collection about people in our community, with most of the people in our community riddled with holes. Otherwise, everything was quite clean, though the angel was right about the beans. There wasn't really much blood, certainly compared with the stuff Nona and Cam had left on the floor themselves. The spell was broken when Cam lifted her chin with one hand so that she was forced to stare into Cam's grave gray eyes at the drying blood and holes in her top. Cam, Camilla was wet with sweat. Nona buried her face in Cam's chest. She listened to Cam's heart thudding in her ribcage, the big soft the dum the dum and she was amazed she was amazed at how fragile and silly a heart was, how poorly protected. Ouch! I mean mood, but ouch! You know, this is gonna get a blue tab. I was gonna get a green tab for like you know, pretty descriptions, but definitely a personal favorite quote we got there. Nona said, are they all? Nearly, said Cam. Hot sauce stood in the middle of the classroom. She was standing where Nona had been shot. The sun had moved and the blood was now in shadow. Hot sauce squatted on her haunches to touch it, then she stood up and she looked at Nona, more particularly the side of Nona's head. Nona reached up past her brain and found it was stiff with blood. I didn't make it up, Hot Sauce said, and her voice sounded wrong. Nona felt uncomfortable. I didn't, I didn't quite lie to you, Hot Sauce, she said. There was a hole in your head, said Hot Sauce. Pash came back from the cloakroom. She was sweaty, too, and there was a red line of grime where her hard shell mask had rubbed her face. She said, driver's down, the unit's wiped. The angel said, oh, God, Pash, was that really necessary? Both Cam and Pash said yes at the same time and then looked at each other. <laughs> I love when that happens. No one would have found it funny, except that Hot Sauce was still looking. She broke away from Cam to take a step toward her, and then Hot Sauce took a step back. No one felt wild and sparkling, electrocuted with despair. That is getting a green tab. That is gorgeous. Nona felt wild and sparkling, electrocuted with despair. She said, and she found her voice quite tight and funny, 
Hot sauce? I saw you die, said Hot Sauce. But I, I'm not. You, you see, I'm not. The angel said, Hot Sauce, I think you need to come with me. But Nona crossed over to Hot Sauce, caught her hand before she could run away, pressed it to her chest, so that Hot Sauce might feel Nona's own ba-dump, ba-dump, just like she had felt Camilla. She cried out, you feel it? Feel it! Feel my heart going! Hot Sauce seemed to feel it. Oh my gosh! I keep skipping! Hot Sauce seemed to feel it. She stared at Nona's chest. She moved her hand up to Nona's neck quite professionally, like a doctor might to feel the pulse there. Nona willed everything into that pulse. Willed away the cold, dead expression in Hot Sauce's eyes. Willed away the shiver at Hot Sauce's mouth. You are alive, Hot Sauce agreed slowly, but you were dead. I saw it. Some of your brains came out. Yuck, I didn't know, said Nona, deeply embarrassed. Oh, honey, this is, that's not the problem she has. This, that's not the problem. She's not worried that you're still dead. The angel said, Hot Sauce, I think you should come here and talk to me for a while. Shut up, said Hot Sauce, and Nona was outraged. I just read the last sentence of the chapter while I was reading out loud. How is my, why is my brain like this? How, 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 how does my brain do this? <clears throat> Shut up, said Hot Sauce, and Nona was outraged. Nona was amazed that Hot Sauce should talk to her deity. The reason for her existence, talk to the angel that way. Before she could get any more shocked, though, Hot Sauce raised her other hand and the gun with it. She pressed the muzzle, muzzle up against one of Nona's temples. Nona dragged her eyes up to Hot Sauce's face, stunned. You're out of the gang, said Hot Sauce, and squeezed the trigger. I just saw you're out of the gang. I didn't realize that, you know, she shot her. Again? Why is Nona getting shot so much? Okay, I need to get ready to go to work. Um, wait, let's see how short the... Oop, sorry. Let's see how short the John Turlute is. Okay, it's two pages. Let's read it. <clears throat> John 5-1. In the dream, he took his time approaching the concrete building. He seemed afraid to. When night fell, he scrabbled around and found a canister full of petrol, smelling hard and strong, and he sloshed it all around the car and he lit it on fire. She didn't like the smell. They sat away from it. In this altitude, the wind kept whipping hard into the flames, licking them redly higher, sending sparks with every blast of air. And she did not ask him, but he said, In the end, we got patted on the shoulder, and they expected us to be happy. They said, You won't have to go to jail. Just keep behaving and no more cow stunts, please. <laughs> what? Also, I have chronic sin sin sinusitis. Can you do something about that? Ugh. People. He said, all the powerful friends we'd made, all those people said I would have been a good thing if they'd had time to present us the right way. That we were something mystical and wonderful, but they were too busy for miracles. That. That is gorgeous. Also, like, what a way to look at society. They were too busy for miracles that if we'd behaved better and been more attractive... Or been more attractive. I don't even fucking know anymore. Then they'd have listened. And like, at some point, some, at some point, you stop wanting people to listen. And you want people to do. He said, we got one night in the kitchen. We got together one night in the kitchen. And like, it was beef again, so he felt bad, man. But at least none of us was weak. <laughs> the meat couldn't go off because I was there. There was a lot of it, but we had a lot of people who, need to be, who needed a feed. We sat there with the window cracked so that G could hear us while he manned the Barbie, which in the dark gets unwholesome as hell, and we ate off paper plates, and I told them, I told them this is it. We were put here to save the planet. We're going to save the planet. We're not going to let them run away. We're going to fix this. And they were all, yeah, John, because they were my friends, and they loved me. But they were also dicks, and most of them had multiple tertiary degrees, and they were also like, how, though? <laughs> You're also a dick, John. We know you can't do Z and Y and X. That's still, we know you can do Z and Y and X. That's not, that's still not A or B or C. We love the bone magic, but how are you going to pull this off? And it was P of all people who said, first things first, if they're going to let us fix the world, world, you got to make them take us seriously. Get some leverage. If they want to make you into a bad wizard, be a bad wizard. We can write the history books to say you were a good wizard, or at least an okay wizard. <laughs> They're not going to listen because we talk nicely. They're going to listen because we scare the shit out of them. He said, which is, which just goes to show that, that only getting to the NCA level two isn't going to stop you making waves in life, right? 
You can still eat steak, talk to wizards, and take down the government. <laughs> yeah, the orange tab's going to that. You can still eat steaks, talk to wizards, and take down the government. You know, that sounds like a great... That sounds like a great afternoon plan. I love it. She did not say anything. In the end, he wasn't really talking to her. He was talking at her. All she had to do was to wait for him to say, Then we got an opportunity. He said, Soon after that, we got visited by a big black car with a bunch of suits in it. We didn't want to, but they had a chat with us over the phone and promised they only wanted to talk. They were representing someone else. I was more confident by then that I could handle anyone coming to ambush us. I had Titania and Ulysses with me all the time, too, but they, were, they really did want to talk. They were very vague about who they were with, but the upshot was that their organization was having a bad time because their leader had re recently been indisposed, and that was going to make them have a worse time pretty soon. When I pushed on how indisposed, they admitted he was dead. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm, we're getting another orange tab there. And I was all, I cannot help you there. That's beyond me right now. And they were like, no, no, no. What we want is for him to not look dead. We can do the rest. <laughs> That's great. Come on, let me stick this tab. There we go. In fact, we prefer it this way. Could you give him a permanent pulse? Could you make it so he bleeds if he gets hurt? Could you fix any current degradation to his corpse? Could he talk if we wanted him to? So you want a puppet. I thought it was an interesting project. I was all, probably, let me work on it. I'm going to have to do some long-range tweaking. If you wanted to speak, you'd need me on call. This couldn't be a one-off. <laughs> I kept trying to push, push to find out who the hell they were and who this guy was. But they were immovable. They were all, here's what we'd pay up front. Here's what we pay every month you kept him looking alive, he said. And that figure had a lot of zeros. I was all, let me think about it. After a few weeks, I proved I could do it. It wasn't hard. The biggest problem was getting the blood to heat up inside the body so the corpse wouldn't spurt stuff well below human temp. <laughs> I said they could fix him up with a heated jacket, but they were anal about it. To make him talk, they had to deep fake a voice box and have someone speak through it or give it a simple AI and call me for complicated speeches. Then we set a time and a date for them to fly me offshore, me and A and M, M and G and everyone else staying at home to do the job and to get the payment. <laughs> they got me a Sino-Swiss bank account under an alias so I could move the cash. I had phone calls from the bankers setting it up, and we were all pretty excited about this because, hell, couldn't we start bank bank holding the cryo project again? Wasn't this funding money? He said, I was all set to fly out when we got another update about the FTL project. They got... They'd got every commitment we'd struggled to get or were in the prog prog process of begging for all of a sudden. IAF had said yes. Pan Euro had said yes. They'd tendered the plan for the first and second and third waves to fly everyone off the planet and was going to take five and a half years max. And that was with leaving people behind to shut everything down before the final wave. No mess, no fuss. They'd stolen a lot of our wording. But, like, that was just one last kick in the ass. We barely felt it. And the reason it was going through was that it was charitable. They said they were funding the bulk of it. It was their money taking these soon-to-be-impoverished trillionaires into space. The guys who'd been so tight with us that their assholes squeaked when they walked. <laughs> M&A kicked off again saying, This is horseshit. Horse, horse shit. This is lies. What ships are they using? Who's engineering this and where? Our contacts were all, ooh, we've seen photos. Our people toured the yards. It's fine. It's all according to plan. I couldn't believe how naive they were being. I couldn't believe they were falling so hard for this corporate smoke show when there had been so many checks and balances and hemming and hawing over us. C tried to say, yes, but that was a different time. Things are very scary now. If you were launching the cryo project right at this minute, you'd probably find it a lot easier. But they didn't make any of us, but that didn't make any of us feel better. It was A's little brother who said, well, you have to understand, money is one big shared hallucination that I'm not sure they could have hallucinated this much. None, none of this is even in crypto. We were sure it was a con, not even a pipe dream, but a con. But I'm not sure they could have hallucinated this much. None of this is even in crypto. Oh man, what the fuck? He said, but nobody listened to us. Nobody investigated the things we told them to investigate. Everyone showed us what they looked like. Everyone showed us what looked like evidence to them. And when we argued back, they reminded us that cows had best friends and complex social relationships. <laughs> M and A were a united front, and that was scary as fuck. Mercy Morn and Augustine? Ooh, interesting. It was always frightening when they stood together. Mmm. The dramatic irony. 
Both of them were pretty quiet when we ended up taking the helicopter out together, us three, landing on a random oil rig to do what we were going to get paid to do. I asked to see the body before anyone passed any money off to anyone. Sixth sense, I guess. He said, they let me in to see the body, and I realized who, who I was dealing with and how big this was. Because I wasn't dealing with a group. I was dealing with a fucking nation. Because I was dealing with a huge political conspiracy. A and M looked at it and looked at me and they said, do it. So I did. I fixed up the corpse, all the ice damage from storage, all the trauma of the body trying to eat itself after death. Did the blood transfusion manually to rehydrate what was there and get it going. Make sure the body was working mechanically and stiffened all the muscles, rejigged the heart. Did the little tricks I'd thought of, got the eyes to blink by themselves, helped them install the throat speaker and helped with the mouth. I was feeling pretty sick about it at this point. I was feeling pretty sick about it by that point. I had no idea the guy was even dead. I mean, that was the point, nobody did, but I didn't feel like a hero. Then again, what could I do? They kept saying that this was for a year, max. Nobody could afford this much political instability right now. We were in the middle of an extinction event. He said, so I had him sitting up and walking around and moving, and we even tested him, making a video call home. All fine, it worked great. But I was like, you'll still need me for big, well, you'll still need me for big public appearances. I can't, I can do it long range. I can't do it long range? I feel like that should be can't, not can. And they were all, we've budgeted for that. And that was when A&M stepped in to negotiate. They said they didn't want the payment in pure cash. They said I wanted something more material. And we went around and around and fucking around. At one point, I thought they'd open fire on all of us because they were being so fucking stroppy. They were hitting the table like in a police drama. Like, we can end this whenever we want. The ball is in our court. We know how much this means to you now. I was all, wow, sorry guys. I don't really know either of these two. They're very unexpected and mean. I came here to have a good time and I think they're being very harsh. I think between bad cop, worse cop, and sorry cop, they got so sick of us they told us, fine, we'll arrange it here and now. He said, and that's how I ended up going home with a couple million dollars and a suitcase nuke. Why are we giving John and his polycule a nuke? Why? Okay, now I really need to go. I'm going to be late for work. Bye.